Chapter 3. Apply the 80 or 20 rule to everything. We always have time enough, if we will but use it aright. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe The 80 or 20 rule is one of the most helpful of all concepts of time in life management. It is also called the Pareto Principle, after the Italian economist Vilfredo Pareto, who first wrote about it in 1895. Pareto noticed that people in his society seemed to divide naturally into what he called the vital few, the top 20% in terms of money and influence, and the trivial many, the bottom 80%. He later discovered that virtually all economic activity was subject to this principle as well. For example, this principle says that 20% of your activities will account for 80% of your results, 20% of your customers will account for 80% of your sales, 20% of your products or services will account for 80% of your profits, 20% of your tasks will account for 80% of the value of what you do, and so on. This means that if you have a list of 10 items to do, Two of those items will turn out to be worth much more than the other eight items put together. Number of tasks versus importance of tasks. Here is an interesting discovery. Each of the ten tasks may take the same amount of time to accomplish, but one or two of those tasks will contribute five or ten times the value of any of the others. Often, a single task can be worth more than all the other nine items put together. This task is invariably the frog that you should eat first. Can you guess on which items the average person is most likely to procrastinate? The sad fact is that most people procrastinate on the top 10 or 20% of items that are the most valuable and important, the vital few. They busy themselves instead with the least important 80%, the trivial many, that contribute very little to results. Focus on activities, not accomplishments. You often see people who appear to be busy all day long but seem to accomplish very little. This is almost always because they are busy working on tasks that are of low value while they are procrastinating on the one or two activities that, if they completed them quickly and well, could make a real difference to their companies and to their careers. The most valuable tasks you can do each day are often the hardest and most complex, but the payoff and rewards for completing these tasks efficiently can be tremendous. For this reason, you must adamantly refuse to work on tasks in the bottom 80% while you still have tasks in the top 20% left to be done. Before you begin work, always ask yourself, is this task in the top 20% of my activities or in the bottom 80%? Rule. Resist the temptation to clear up small things first. Remember, whatever you choose to do over and over eventually becomes a habit that is hard to break. If you choose to start your day working on low-value tasks, you will soon develop the habit of always starting and working on low-value tasks. This is not the kind of habit you want to develop or keep. Low-value tasks are like rabbits. They multiply continually. You never get caught up. The hardest part of any important task is getting started on it in the first place. Once you actually begin work on a valuable task, you will be naturally motivated to continue. A part of your mind loves to be busy working on significant tasks that can really make a difference. Your job is to feed this part of your mind continually. Motivate yourself. Just thinking about starting and finishing an important task motivates you and helps you overcome procrastination. The fact is, the time required to complete an important job is often the same as the time required to do an unimportant job. The difference is that you get a tremendous feeling of pride and satisfaction from completing something valuable and significant. However, when you complete a low-value task using the same amount of time and energy, you get little or no satisfaction. Time management is really life management, personal management. It is really taking control of the sequence of events. Time management is taking control over what you do next and you are always free to choose the task that you will do next. Your ability to choose between the important and the unimportant is the key determinant of your success in life and work. Effective, productive people discipline themselves to start on the most important task that is before them. They force themselves to eat that frog, whatever it is. As a result, they accomplish vastly more than the average person and are much happier as a result. This should be your way of working as well. Eat that frog. 1. Make a list of all the key goals, activities, projects, and responsibilities in your life today. Which of them are, or could be, in the top 10 or 20% of tasks that represent, or could represent, 80 or 90% of your results? 2. Resolve today that you are going to spend more and more of your time working in those few areas that can really make a difference in your life and career and spend less and less time on lower value activities. Chapter 4. Consider the consequences. Every great man has become great. Every successful man has succeeded, in proportion as he has confined his powers to one particular channel. Orison Sweat Martin. 
The mark of the superior thinker is his or her ability to accurately predict the consequences of doing or not doing something. The potential consequences of any task or activity are the key determinants of how important a task really is to you and to your company. This way of evaluating the significance of a task is how you determine what your next frog really is. Dr. Edward Banfield of Harvard University, after more than 50 years of research, concluded that a long-time perspective is the most accurate single predictor of upward social and economic mobility in America. A long-time perspective turns out to be more important than family background, education, race, intelligence, connections, or virtually any other single factor in determining your success in life and at work. Your attitude toward time, your time horizon, has an enormous impact on your behavior and your choices. People who take a long-term view of their lives and careers always seem to make much better decisions about their time and activities than people who give very little thought to the future. Rule. Long-term thinking improves short-term decision-making. Successful people have a clear future orientation. They think 5, 10, and 20 years out into the future. They analyze their choices and behaviors in the present to make sure that what they are doing today is consistent with the long-term future that they desire. Make better decisions about time. In your work, having a clear idea of what is really important to you in the long term makes it much easier for you to make better decisions about your priorities in the short term. By definition, something that is important has long-term potential consequences. Something that is unimportant has few or no long-term potential consequences. Before starting on anything, you should always ask yourself, what are the potential consequences of doing or not doing this task? Rule. Future intent influences and often determines present actions. The clearer you are about your future intentions, the greater influence that clarity will have on what you do in the moment. With a clear long-term vision, you are much more capable of evaluating an activity in the present to ensure that it is consistent with where you truly want to end up. Think about the long term. Successful people are those who are willing to delay gratification and make sacrifices in the short term so that they can enjoy far greater rewards in the long term. Unsuccessful people, on the other hand, Think more about short-term pleasure and immediate gratification while giving little thought to the long-term future. Dennis Waitley, a motivational speaker, says, Losers try to escape from their fears and drudgery with activities that are tension-relieving. Winners are motivated by their desires toward activities that are goal-achieving. For example, coming into work earlier, reading regularly in your field, Taking courses to improve your skills, and focusing on high-value tasks in your work will all combine to have an enormous positive impact on your future. On the other hand, coming into work at the last moment, reading the newspaper, drinking coffee, and socializing with your coworkers may seem fun and enjoyable in the short term but inevitably leads to lack of promotion, underachievement, and frustration in the long term. If a task or activity has large potential positive consequences, make it a top priority and get started on it immediately. If something can have large potential negative consequences if it is not done quickly and well, that becomes a top priority as well. Whatever your frog is, resolve to gulp it down first thing. Motivation requires motive. The greater the potential positive impact that an action or behavior of yours can have on your life, once you define it clearly, the more motivated you will be to overcome procrastination and get it done quickly. Keep yourself focused and forward moving by continually starting and completing those tasks that can make a major difference to your company and to your future. The time is going to pass anyway. The only question is how you use it and where you are going to end up at the end of the weeks and months that pass. And where you end up is largely a matter of the amount of consideration you give to the likely consequences of your actions in the short term. Thinking continually about the potential consequences of your choices, decisions, and behaviors is one of the very best ways to determine your true priorities in your work and personal life. Obey the Law of Forced Efficiency The Law of Forced Efficiency says, There is never enough time to do everything, but there is always enough time to do the most important thing. Put another way, you cannot eat every tadpole and frog in the pond, but you can eat the biggest and ugliest one, and that will be enough, at least for the time being. When you're running out of time and know that the consequences of not completing a key task or project can be really serious, you always seem to find the time to get it done, often at the very last minute. You start early, you stay late, and you drive yourself to complete the job rather than face the unpleasantness that would follow if you didn't complete it within the time limit. Rule. There will never be enough time to do everything you have to do. The average person in business today, especially a manager in the age of cutbacks, is working at 110 to 130% of capacity. And the jobs and responsibilities just keep piling up. 
We all have stacks of reading material we still have to go through. Many people have hundreds of hours of reading and projects backlogged at home and at the office. What this means is that you will never be caught up. Get that wishful idea out of your mind. All you can hope for is to be on top of your most important responsibilities. The others will just have to wait. Deadlines are an excuse. Many people say that they work better under the pressure of deadlines. Unfortunately, years of research indicate that this is seldom true. Point one, under the pressure of deadlines, often self-created through procrastination, people suffer greater stress, make more mistakes, and have to redo more tasks than under any other conditions. Often the mistakes that people make when working under tight deadlines lead to defects and cost overruns that cause substantial financial losses in the long term. Sometimes a job actually takes much longer to complete when people rush to get it done at the last minute and then have to redo it. It is much better to plan your time carefully in advance and then build in a sizable buffer to compensate for unexpected delays and diversions. However much time you think a task will take, add on another 20% or more as insurance. Or make a game of getting the job done well in advance of the deadline. You will be amazed at how much more relaxed you are and how much better a job you do when you are on top of your most important tasks. Three questions for maximum productivity. You can use three questions on a regular basis to keep yourself focused on completing your most important tasks on schedule. The first question is, what are my highest value activities? Put another way, what are the biggest frogs that you have to eat to make the greatest contribution to your organization? To your family? To your life in general? This is one of the most important questions you can ever ask and answer. What are your highest value activities? First, think this through for yourself. Then, ask your boss. Ask your co-workers and subordinates. Ask your friends and family. Like focusing the lens of a camera, you must be crystal clear about your highest value activities before you begin work. The second question you can ask continually is, what can I and only I do, that if done well, will make a real difference? This question came from the late Peter Drucker, the management guru. It is one of the most important of all questions for achieving personal effectiveness. What can you and only you do that if done well can make a real difference? This is something that only you can do. If you don't do it, it won't be done by someone else. But if you do do it, and you do it well, it can really make a difference to your life and your career. What is this particular frog for you? Every hour of every day, you can ask yourself this question and come up with a specific answer. Your job is to be clear about the answer and then to start and work on this task before anything else. The third question you can ask is, what is the most valuable use of my time right now? In other words, what is my biggest frog of all at this moment? This is the core question of time management. Answering this question correctly is the key to overcoming procrastination and becoming a highly productive person. Every hour of every day, one task represents the most valuable use of your time at that moment. Your job is to ask yourself this question, over and over again, and to always be working on the answer to it, whatever it is. Do first things first and second things not at all. As Goethe said, the things that matter most must never be at the mercy of the things that matter least. The more accurate your answers are to these three questions, the easier it will be for you to set clear priorities, to overcome procrastination, and to get started on that one activity that represents the most valuable use of your time. Eat that frog. 1. Review your list of tasks, activities, and projects regularly. Continually ask yourself, which one project or activity, if I did it in an excellent and timely fashion, would have the greatest positive consequences in my work or personal life. 2. Determine the most important thing you could be doing every hour of every day, and then discipline yourself to work continually on the most valuable use of your time. What is this for you right now? Whatever it is that can help you the most, set it as a goal, make a plan to achieve it, and go to work on your plan immediately. Remember the wonderful words of Goethe. Only engage, and the mind grows heated. Begin it, and the work will be completed.